Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to discuss about how to influence others at work as an individual contributor. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm only going to share about three stories. No big deal. The first story. Last year, there was a project that involved with a supplier. So when we're installing a, a piece of equipment at our lab, uh, there is some issues happen on the equipment. So we had a discussion with the uh, supplier. We had a lot of meetings and we called them to see if people can come on site to help us. So during the meeting, there was a senior engineer from the supplier told us he cannot come to on-site to support us, but without any reasons. He just seems to be like not very willing to speak up. I opened up something like, hey, I know you want to help. So can you tell me what what's the concern you have? So the other engineer started to talk about because of the COVID-19, they have very strict rules. So I told him, okay, I already talked about this uh, concern long time ago. We already showed you the procedure, how to come on site. And uh, I understand safety is a very important factor. If for any reason you feel like you cannot perform your work on site safely, please let me know because I had the same struggle at the beginning of the pandemic. I just openly shared my concern when I was able to go back to the lab at the beginning. So after I share my personal story, the engineer from the supplier is uh, start to speak up. He said, yes, I'm kind of uh, at a older age. So I really, uh, I, I don't really go out that much even for the groceries, I try to minimize going out. So I, I'm not really comfortable to come on site to support you guys. So after I hear from him, I immediately understand, okay, so why he's not willing to uh, jump ahead. So I just say, okay, don't worry. I understand your situation. Again, safety is the most important thing. It's the first priority. We're not going to force anyone to come on site if you're not ready just like what our manager told us at the beginning of the pandemic. So I just repeat the sentence. And after the meeting, he appreciated my understanding and thanked uh, me for uh, allowing them to do the work remotely. You know what? Even though they cannot come on site, but they did a very good job to prepare all the troubleshooting paperwork. And also I can reach them immediately over phone. So eventually we're still able to solve the problem without uh, require them without requiring them to come on site. The second story uh, is uh, also associated with the same project as the first one. We have lab tech technician helping us to install equipment on, the, on our tool. The problem is that we don't have too much resources at that time. There is more project and constantly we're competing with other programs and projects for resources. It's a very big project and it's a little longer time for it uh, to complete. So I really rely on them to do a good job to make sure the project close on time. But again, because they are not a uh, like technical owner for the project, they're just come as a tech to finish their daily tasks, then they go home. So how do I make them more accountable or help me finish the project on time is a very important question because it's close it's very close to the Christmas day so I end up sending both of them a gift card first of all I show my appreciation for their help second I also send an email to the managers to make sure their managers know they are doing a good job on the project and also I was making a personal relationship with them by going into the lab and doing the work with them side by side. I try to understand what's their struggles. 
because I sent the gift card, I showed my appreciation. So the result is uh, much better than what I expected. One of the lab technician actually stay very late. He was supposed to go home. I mean, he's a swing shift. He's supposed to go home around 10 or 11, but he, for a few days, he stayed late until 12, even 1 a.m. to finish what he wants to complete the project on time. So it's really helped us to close the project on time and gladly we uh, made a very good progress on that and uh, also recognized by the leadership uh, team. The third story is a recent one that I work with another engineer in the safety group. Uh, I was a little bit senior than him. The way I approach him is I try to understand from his uh, perspective what is the value or what's the benefit of doing this project for him. What I did is uh, I had a phone call with him to discuss the uh, results and I say, okay, uh, I think we can do a better preparation on how to present this data to the management team because first of all, it's your chance to show that you have sir, uh, you have a uh, a broad and a deep understanding about why we're doing this. And we're not just summarizing the data, we want to tie into the business end of it, how we're bringing value to the customer by doing this, or how much cost savings to do to enable this feature for our, for our customer. After our discussion, he started doing better work at collecting all the data and summarize it. And by the end of the uh, project, we were presenting all the data together to the team and we get some good feedback saying it's a good teamwork. So if we summarize those stories, what we can learn from it? Uh, first of all, again, I want to emphasize that I'm not saying this is only important factors in terms of to influence others. If you search online or if you take some um, classes or courses, I'm pretty sure they will tell you what are the most important factors to influence others. Like you have to build expertise in your area or some hardcore skills. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying that is not important, but that's not a focus from my story. So again, to summarize, first of all, you need to build trust and make that personal connection. Even if you feel it's just part of the uh, work, I still encourage you to try to know that individual better. Like in my case, I work with those lab technicians. I talk with them, I chat with them, what's going on in their daily life, how pandemics are affecting their families, their friends. Just try to know them and also exp and, and share some of your th stories with them to, get, to, uh, to create a relationship. The second is uh, that build the trust. So how do you build the trust is you have to show your sympathy. Like for the first story I shared, all of us are human. We share some of the common fears and concerns. There's an old Chinese proverb said, if you don't want to do it, don't impose it on others. Another thing is try to listen uh, more actively to others. Uh, this year, I started to realize you have you have to really understand from the other person's perspective. Otherwise, it's really hard to achieve anything at work, at life, with your family members, with your friends. It's all the same, same situation. Try to appreciate hearing others, what others have to say. And if you keep doing that, I think you will benefit a lot. The next is uh, try to recognize uh, and appraise your coworkers regularly. You want to make people feel important. The reason that you want to uh, appraise others more is because that will motivate others. Like I said, if, if they have a sense of importance, they will willing, they are more willing to do whatever it takes to keep that status and to help you to achieve what you want. Don't force them to do anything other than arouse the eager for them to want to do it. Like same thing for children, kids, right? If, if you force your child to eat, nine out of 10 times you will feel because they are not wants to be forced to do things. You want to give them freedom or you want to motivate them to say, okay, 
what's the benefit of doing those things for them? For example, if they eat, you can tell them, okay, you'll be stronger and you can be a fireman or a superhero or whatever they want to be. So in that way, they are more likely to, to cooperate, which means to eat, but in terms of eating for himself, not for you. So same thing in the work, try to think about what are the things you want them to do or benefit from them. Like what I showed in my third story, I told them, if you are doing this thing, you will show in the management team that you are a strategic thinker. You are not just compiled data presented. You are thinking about what you, what, what are the value you can bring to the customer. Yeah. So that's what I want to share with you on how to influence others without authority. So if you have other ideas, please let me know or tell me what are your struggles when I'm working with your team members. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you like my channel, please subscribe.